you today. Oh, I'm looking on my Zoom here and I've got one user who looks like he's logged in about 30 or 40 times. All right, we're back. Now yeah, that looks better. Well, hello everyone. <clears throat> How are you doing today? It's a great Thanksgiving weekend, isn't it?
Well, let's see if we can get this done fairly quickly. <clears throat> Since I suppose a lot of you are probably excited about getting on with your holiday plans. All my kids are here from school. I'm the only one who's actually working this week. Everyone else is here. <clears throat> so this morning, I was like, maybe I can sleep until eight. You know what was weird about my, uh, not weird, oh, I guess it's weird, <laughs> about my eight-year-old is on weekdays at seven o'clock when he's supposed to get up for school, he's like, oh, I can't get up, it's too tired, uh, I can't go to school, I just wanna sleep in some more. And then on days when he doesn't have school, at seven o'clock, he's like, time to get up, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Time's a wasting. And so this morning I was like, oh, maybe I can sleep until eight o'clock. And at seven o'clock, he's like, let's go, come on, get up. Like, uh, wait till you have kids. <laughs> um, let's see. So we are getting close to the end of the semester. We've got this week, I believe this is week 14, and then we got two more weeks on that. Excuse me if I'm wrong about that, but I think this is week 14. So today we're talking about NFAs and DFAs. Wednesday we'll also talk about them. And then that'll wrap it up for regular expressions and finite state machines. So we'll go on to do um, some other stuff. You Notice know, so we've got a bunch of to be announced here because I don't yet know what we're gonna be doing those days. I don't know if we'll meet both these days on week 16 because that's going to be finals week for most of you. We don't have a final in this class. Oh, I just see a chat message. I'm not recording yet. I'm, I'm recording on YouTube, but I'm not recording on Zoom. So let me start that. <clears throat> recording in progress. All right, let me start over again since I didn't hit record. So we're on week 14, I believe, and um, this is today. Today we're going to be talking about NFAs and DFAs, which are two kinds of state machines. We'll also be talking about those on Wednesday, and then that'll wrap it up for regular expressions. <clears throat> on uh, weeks 15 and 16, I've got a bunch of TBAs to be announced here, because I don't yet know what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm pretty sure that on Monday we're going to be talking about Mealy and Moore machines, which is a different kind of state machine. But then some possible topics for the other days are include quantum computing. I know a little bit about quantum computing, and I can tell you what I know in about one class session. Maybe we can also do some 8-bit programming with some of these computers back behind me. And I don't even know if we're going to meet both these days on week 16, because that's finals week for my students. Uh, even though we don't have a final in this class, the, some students will still be busy working and studying. But I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the class wants to do. I'm happy to do class both those days. Any questions about that? I, I have a question about a po possible topic. Could we talk a little bit about AI? This seems like this is a perfect mm -hmm. class to go over like the logic trees, like the simple logic trees for AI and whatnot, like okay. neural nets and whatnot. All right. Um, and how about dynamic programming? Ooh. Not really a discrete structures topic, but we'll see what we can do with that. But something like decision trees, that, that fits in pretty well. Quantum computing fits in pretty well. There's actually a state machine involved with that, along with discrete states and things like that. All right, so these are these are some good ideas. I will I will work on those. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on here. <clears throat> so last time we had a regular expression that looked like this: x y z or y x or x y x. And in one case, we came up with a state machine that looked like what I've got here. I had one branch that was the XYZ branch, another one that was the YX branch, and a third one that was the XYX branch. And this is called <clears throat> a non-deterministic finite state automaton, which is a fancy word for a finite state machine. 
or NFA, because when you're sitting here in this state, there are two transitions both labeled X. And you don't know which transition you're supposed to follow until you know more about what's coming later. And in fact, you can't even resolve which transition to go down until you get two more transitions later, whether it's the X or the Z here. So that's what makes this non-deterministic. You don't know there's an ambiguity about which transition to follow when you're in that state. <clears throat> now, we found another way to draw this finite state machine or finite state automaton by kind of factoring out the x, z, this right here, factoring it out, and then you end up with just two branches, your x, y, or, uh, um, sorry, let me say that again, x, y, followed by x or z, or the y, x branch. So this is a deterministic finite state automaton because there are no ambiguities. When you are in a state, you know which transition you're supposed to take because there's only one transition with that label. <clears throat> so you can tell if a finite state machine is an NFA or a DFA simply by looking for ambiguities. If there's any one place, one or more places, in the finite state automaton in which there is an ambiguity about which transition to take, that makes it an NFA automatically. If there are no ambiguities anywhere, it's a DFA. <clears throat> so let's learn how to transform this tree or this finite state machine into this one, which actually leads to an important thing I wanted to make, which is uh, all NFAs can be transformed into an equivalent DFA. So there is a way to take any NFA and turn it into another DFA. Now, when we turn this NFA into this DFA, we may not arrive at exactly the same picture, but it should be equivalent, uh, meaning that it accepts the same strings. So here's how we're going to do it. <clears throat> and to do this, I want you to picture yourself as being kind of like uh, cave explorers. And so you've got one person down in the cave system, and you've got this cave system with all these rooms and tunnels leading between the rooms. And you've got one person up on the surface who is mapping it out. So they're using radios to communicate with each other. So you've got one person way up here. Oh, that's a terrible drawing. I'm not a great artist. Someone up here, there we go. This little radio sends out a signal. And then you've got another explorer down here, also with a radio. And this person's job is to go and explore these tunnels. So the person up here can't see what's happening down here, um, but they can use their radios to communicate with each other and find out what's going on. So uh, the person at the top here says, okay, uh, uses the radio, all right, all right actually, I, I can get a prop out. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on. I need to move some stuff around in order to get my prop. All right. So the person on the surface goes, okay, I want you to tell me what room you're in. And so the person down here says, I'm in room number one. So the person on the surface says, okay, I'm going to draw a state here with a one in it. <clears throat> and then the person on the surface says, okay, tell me what tunnels you see. And the person down the cave says, well, I see a tunnel labeled X and I see one labeled Y. Now, it, truthfully, there's actually two tunnels labeled X, but what the person on the surface is asking is, what labels do you see? And the person in the cave says, I see an X and I see a Y. So the mapper draws a tunnel labeled X and a tunnel labeled Y. Okay, so the one on the surface says, okay, now go through the door labeled X. 
And so this fellow here, you know, wanders through X. But now what happens is a little strange in this tunnel system. <clears throat> he walks through tunnel X, but he winds up in rooms 2 and 7 simultaneously. All right? It's almost as if this, uh, this cave system actually looks like this. There's a tunnel labeled X, and then, let me do it a different way here. There's a tunnel labeled X, and it kind of branches off and goes to two other states. Okay, so this person here walks through tunnel X, and then through some weird anomaly in this cave system, and manages to clone himself so that he's in both of these states. So he walks through X and winds up both in 2 and 7 at the same time. <clears throat> All right, so once he arrives at the rooms, the person on the surface says, OK, tell me where you are. And the person in the case says, I am in 2 and 7, oddly enough. Or maybe what happens is both the explorers who are down there report in and say, uh, one says, I'm in 2, and one says, I'm, I'm in 7, and their voices overlap. And the person on the surface says, oh, okay, well, I guess he's in 2 and 7 at the same time. So I'm just going to write that down. I'm going to put down here that he's in 2 and 7. <coughs> um, and then he says, okay, uh, what doors do you see? So the one here in 2 says, I see a Y. And the one in 7 says, I see a Y. So both of them report that they see a Y. The person on the surface says, okay, well, I'm going to draw a Y here. And it leads to some room. And he says, okay, walk through door Y. And now both of these explorers simultaneously walk through their Y doors and then end up in rooms 3 and 8. So the map on the surface says, what room are you in? And they report back and say, we are in rooms 3 and 8. Okay, well, we're in room 3 and 8. This doesn't seem strange at all to the person on the surface that... Two of them are reporting back. Next step is, what doors do you see? And one of them reports back and says, I see a door labeled Z. And another one says, I see a door labeled X. So the mapper goes, well, there must be an X and there must be a Z. Walk through door X. So this one over here walks through door X, ends up over here, and he says, okay, where'd you end up? And the one in the cave says, I ended up in door, uh, in room 9. Oh, and that is a accepting state. And then the one on the surface says, okay, now walk through door Z. And this one over here walks through Z and ends up in state four, and that's also an accepting state. All right, so we're not quite done mapping the surface, so he tells them in the cave somehow to transport themselves back over here. So they started in room number one again. He says, okay, well now we're done with room X, please walk through uh, door Y. And then where'd you end up? So walking through door Y, you end up in 5. Okay, what doors do you see? I see a door labeled X. Okay, go through that door and tell me where you end up. And the reports back and says, I ended up in 6, and that's an accepting state. And so our map is done at that point. So notice that <clears throat> we've taken an NFA that had an ambiguity in it, and we removed it. And so happens that the picture we came up with here matches the picture that we came up with over here. Okay, so that's how you do it. Is you start at the beginning state, and then you start exploring the map writing down um, the, the transitions that you encounter along the way, along with the rooms, and you should be able to draw a map that has no ambiguities in it.
Any questions on that? So I'm going to take a moment here to set up my computer. I just realized I need to show you something. Hold on, I need to duck out of the frame for a sec. Open up my bag. It has my computer in it. Well, let me show you a, uh, another one over here. So we're going to do this one next. We could start out by writing out some strings that are acceptable and some strings that are not acceptable, and that will be used to help check our answer when we get it. So what are some strings that this state machine accepts? You can say them or put them in the chat. A, B. A, B. Let's see. So, A, B, good. B. Just B. Mm -hmm. You can go this way. B, A, B. Or just B, A. Let's see. B, A. Whoops. B, A. No. Oh, B, A. See, now here's the thing is there's an ambiguity right here. So even though it looks like maybe B, A, B is not accepted if you take this path, it is accepted if you take this one. And so with an NFA, as long as there is some way to get to an accepting state, then that string is acceptable. Give me another one. AA. Now, AA. Let's see. How do we do AA? We go this it way. It ends on four. And then this way? Okay. We also got AA, BA, and variations therein. A, or A, BA, like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. B, B, B. Three Bs. B, B, B. Good. B, B, A, A, B, 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 B. <laughs> Wait. B, B, A, A, and then a bunch of Bs. Yeah. B, B, A, A. B, B, B. You can also just do B, B, A, A. B, B, A. Whoops, no. B, B, A, A. There we go. Okay. And how about some strings that are not acceptable? Ones that do not end up on an accepting state. Like just A. B, B. Let's see. B, B. Okay, good. B, A, pointing to five. Let's see. B. Yeah, but there is a way to do B, A and end up at three. So okay. B, A is acceptable because there is a way to end up at an accepting. Just A. I uh, got that. Yeah. Just A. Mm -hmm. How about B A B? A A B. Oh wait, B A B is acceptable. Now B A B we can do. Yeah, B A B we can do, but A A B I don't think we can do. A A. Like that. Oh, B. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, B. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Might have been lag, but yeah. I just didn't see it at first. B, B, A, B? B, 
B, B, A, whoops, B, B, A, B, A, then oh, B. Oh, B, yeah. Is there any way to end up on five that isn't acceptable? No, because of the two A's leading to five. Like, you could always just choose to go to three because the only way to get to five is through four. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be an A that leads to five. Um, so that would be your ending, your ending path. And there's no way to, to do that where you couldn't just go to three. Like, oh, except that. Like no, because you could take the other B to three again. Yeah, if we did like B, A, B, B, we could do B, A, B, B, but we could also do B, A, B, and then B. And we can't just do B, A, because there is a way to do that. Right, so we can't end up on five. Okay, so we got some that aren't acceptable here. All right, now let's do our cave exploring. So we'll start it in one. And we see that there is an A and a B transition, so we'll map that out. Now, if we follow the A, we end up in 2. And if we follow the B, we end up in 4. Now let's go. Let's turn our attention to two. Uh, what transitions do we see leading out of two? Well, we see a B, and we see an A. If we follow the B, it ends up in three. And if we follow the A, it ends up in four. So actually, we should draw this one going here. Okay, I think we're done with two now. We've, ex we've fully explored two because we got all of the transitions le leading out of it. Let's do three. So three, there are no transitions leading out of it anywhere, so this one is done as well. Uh, let's turn our attention to four. So what transitions do we see leading out of four? A. We see an A. E and there's also a B. There's a B here, and there's two A's. So the B just goes back to two. The A goes where? Three and five. Three and five. So even though we already have a three on our map, we're going to draw a separate state for the combined three and five. Here's where things get a little tricky. If we are in 3 and 5 at the same time, what transitions do we see? A 3? Well, we see a B. We see a, a door label yeah. B, right? There, there happens to be two, but we see one label B. Uh, we don't see any A's because there's nothing leading out of 3. So we know there's a B. Where does the B go? Three and five. Yeah, one of the Bs goes to three, and another one goes back to five. So that means this one goes back to itself. And I think we've now fully explored that one. So we've, we've fully explored all of these rooms. Now we'll label the start state, that's the same. The accepting states in the original state machine were the rooms labeled three and four. So look in your new map and find any room with a, either a three or a four in it and make those accepting. 
So this one up here is accepting. This one here is accepting. And so is this one. Because it has a 3 in it. Doesn't matter that it also has a 5, which is not an accepting. What matters is that there's a 3 in here. Great. Let's see if it accepts the same strings. Does it do AB? AB. Good. Just B? Good. BAB? BAB? BA? Right here. AA? Good. AABA? AAB? Uh, A. Yeah, so A, A, B, A. Three Bs. You got B, B, B. B, B, A, A, B, B, B. B, B, A, A, B, B, B. And then finally B, B, A, A. You got B, B, A, A. And then the non-acceptings, let's make sure that those don't work. So we got just an A, B, B, A, A, B, and B, B, A, B. <coughs> so, all good there. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is a, a little Java application, very old one called Automaton Simulator. And you can lay down things like, you know, you can lay down states. We can make this one a final state. And then we can put in some transitions. See, there's a way to, there we go. And then we can change these. And I know there's also a way to move these. Oh, here we go. We can make these a little clearer if we just move these around. Can you see these letters well enough? They're kind of small. Oh, yeah, they're fine. I think I actually have a different version of this application where I made these bigger. I'll have to go. I think it's in here. Let me look around in here. Uh, Sam, this one here. Oh, this one. Artifacts. Ooh. There we go. Hold on. <laughs> uh, now, now I want to try this out here. Normal exit, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's better. Nice big labels. And I added more letters. It was great. Here. I'm just randomly picking letters. And then we can move these around. Awesome. So now we can execute this state machine. If I click on play here. I can start typing in letters, and then you'll see the little Cave Explorer move around. So I press B, it goes over there, and then if I press C, it goes down there, and I press A, and then you can see it ends up on an accepting state. And we can clear this again. I can do A, B, C, B, C, A, 
C, C, C. Those are all accepting. And then I can try it again. I can do like B, C. And then if I type something that doesn't exist, if I do like C, then it just it turns red, right? And I can't do anything at that point. Um, I can also do a non-deterministic one. Let's reproduce that first one that we drew. The one that had those three branches. This one was an accepting. This one was an accepting. And this one was an accepting. And then we'll draw these in. Oops, I don't want that. Delete this. There we go. And this one was leveled X, this one was Y, and this one was Z, this one was Y, and X, and then this one was X, this was Y, and this was X. And let me just move this, make it a little clearer, there feel better about that. Oh, that's not good. There we go. Okay, let's try it out. So, when I start here at the initial state and I do X, watch what happens. Right? You see both of them split off and they go into those two rooms at the same time. And then if I do a Y, then they both travel over to Y. And then if I just do Z, see the other one goes away. But we did end up at a final state. So we know that this is an accepting string right here. Let's try that again. Let's do x, and then y, and then just x. You can see that one ends up on the accepting state. If I do y, and then x, it only goes down that middle path. Okay, but that's literally what I mean by when you're in that first state there, and you go through the X transition, it splits off, and it goes down both of them at the same time. Uh, let's do this one. Let's try it out. So we've got our initial, and then one, two, three, or this one is a final, this one is a final, and then we'll start putting in our transitions. So there's one there, there's one there, let's move you down here, and then there's one over here, and one this way, this way, this way, and I'll move you down here, and it goes up there. one right here, I'll move it over here. This one is labeled B. This one is also labeled B. This one is A. This is A. B. No, not C. This is B. No, no, no. Um, there we go. And this one is A, and this one is B. I think that's all of them. Oh, missed one. This one is a. Okay, let's try this out. So one of the accepting strings was A, B. Let's try that. A, B. Good. Another one was just B. So it goes down that way. We have B, A, B. B, A. And those it takes both paths. And then B. And actually, both of those take you to, uh, well, the BAB takes you to an accepting, right? It also takes you to this one, but that's not an accepting one. 
but we do end up at an accepting one, so BAB is acceptable. Let's try that again. B, A, and then watch this. Here's the B. And then we can also just do B and then A. That ends up at the accepting. A, A. That works. A, A, B, A. A, A, B, A. Three Bs. B, B, B. Good. And we have B, B, A, A, and then three Bs. B, B, A, A, B, B, B. So we did end up being accepting. And then finally we had B, B, A, A. B, B, A, A. And then as far as ones that weren't acceptable, we had just A, that ends up here. B, B. A, A, B. A, A, B. And B, B, A, B. B, B, A, B. Okay, so I have another one for us to try. So we're getting some practice learning how to convert these NFAs to DFAs. Here's what it looks like. And while you're looking at it there, I'm going to draw it out on this simulator. Okay, so here it is. And so let's see some strings that are acceptable. Why don't you tell me one that's acceptable? We'll try it out. Anyone? A works, uh, A, B. Or A and then any number of Bs, any number of okay. A's and then B. Uh -huh. So A works. Good. And then what? Did you say A, B? Uh, a, B works. A, B. And A with any number of Bs would work. So if I do some additional Bs. Um, any number of A's followed by a B would work. A, 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 B. <clears throat> Wait, let me try that again. A, A, B, B, A, B. That works. A, A, B, B, A, B. And then some that are not acceptable. A, B, A. That doesn't work. A, B, 
a a doesn't work. So any number of a's at that point doesn't work. And that's pretty much it, right? It's a, b, and then any number of a's. Yeah, it's, it's anything that ends in a except for just a. All right, let's try to convert this. So we start here at state number one. That's our start state. And we see an A transition, but it leads both to rooms two and four. So if we're in states two and four at the same time, what doors do we see labeled? So there's an A coming out of four, there's a B coming out of four, there's a B coming out of two. So we see both an A and a B. Where does A go? So you look at two, I don't see any A's coming out of two, so I don't worry about that one. For state number four, I see an A leading back to number four. So that is a separate state. Just four by itself is separate than two and four. So if we're in two and four at the same time, and we follow the A transition, we'll end up only in four. We won't go to two at all. Okay, let's do the Bs. The B leading out of two and four, there's a B leading out of four that goes to two. And there's a B leading out of two that goes to three. So that means there is a new state labeled two, three on a B transition. Did I get that right? Let's just double check. So out of a two, there's a B that goes to three. And out of four, there's a B that goes to two. Okay, so we're, we're done with two and four. Now let's do just four. Out of four, there is a B that goes to two, and there's an A that goes to four. So there's an A that goes to itself, and B goes to just two, so that's a new state. Okay, so I think we're down to four. Let's turn our attention to two, three. And so if we are in two and three at the same time, and we follow an A, we'll go to four. So that's this one here. And if we're in two and three at the same time, and we follow a B, well, one of them goes to three, and the other one goes back to two. So two, three on a B goes to itself. So I think we're down to two, three now. And now let's turn our attention to just two. Two on an A doesn't go anywhere. And on a B goes to just three. So that's another state. Okay, so we're done with two. Just making sure I've done this correctly. So on a, I'm just double checking here. Four on an A. Uh, goes to four, so that's this one here. Two on a, just two on a B goes to three. There's no other transitions leaving out, so I think, okay, so it goes to three. Okay, so three on an A goes to four. So that's here. And then three on a B goes to two. Whew. 
So we started out with a fairly simple NFA, and we ended up with a DFA that's a lot more complicated. But there should be no ambiguities now anywhere in here. Um, the last thing to do is uh, label our accepting states, so anything with a 2 or a 3 in it. Let's try it out. So just A. Good. A, B. A, B. Mm -hmm. A and then a bunch of Bs. A, B, 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 B. Three A's and two B's. One, two, three. And then one, two. Good. And then finally A, A, B, B, A, B. A, A, B, B, A, B. And then not accepting are A, B, A. So A, B, A. Good. And then A, B, A, A. A, B, A, A. Interestingly, what about AA? So I can see here that AA is not accepted. Is AA also not accepted in this one? Yeah, anything more than uh, anything more than one A shouldn't be accepted. Anything that ends in A but isn't just A should not be accepted. So if we do AA, we can see that is not accepted. So we could have written that one down in our list of not accepted strings. And maybe another one, A, B, A. Oh, we already got that one. Uh, A, B, A, A. We got that one. A, B, B, A. So A, two Bs, and then an A. Let's see here. A, B, B, and then A. Yep. What did I say there? A, B, B, A, A. Okay, so that's how you uh, basically transform an NFA into a DFA. Um, but that's not how the computer does it. The computer doesn't draw the pictures and then explore caves. The uh, computer does it a little bit differently. The computer uses a table. So in order to transform an NFA to a DFA using a table, we need to turn the NFA into a table. Let's see how to do that. So across the top, we're going to write down all the transitions we have. We've got A, B, and C. And on the left-hand side, we're going to put down all the states we have. And then I'm also going to label my start state and my accepting state. And then here in the middle, you're going to write... Um, where the transitions go. For example, if I'm on state number one and I follow a B transition, if I'm here and I follow a B transition, I go to two and three. If I'm in state number one and I follow an A transition, I don't go anywhere. There's no A's leading out of it. There's no C's going out of it either, so I'll just put dashes there. So I'm filling in this table with all the transition information. If I'm in state number two and I follow an A, then I go back to one. If I'm in state number two and I follow a B, there's no Bs. And a C goes to a three. And then finally state number three, there's no A's. There's a B that goes to two and there's a C that goes to one and three. So this table captures all the information that's in my diagram. 
I should be able to reproduce this diagram using the information from the table. In other words, if you, if you didn't see this at all, and I gave you just the table, you ought to be able to draw the diagram. It might not look exactly the same, but all the transitions and states should be in the same, should, should lead to the same places. Okay, so now we're going to draw a DFA table. So let's pretend for a moment that we don't see this. We use just the information that's here. So I'm still going to put my transitions across the top, but I'm not going to fill in the left-hand side yet. I'm going to start at number one. Right, so basically I've entered the cave system here at number one. And now I'm going to start exploring state number one. So this is where the person on the surface is radioing down to the person in the caves and says, okay, um, if you see an A, walk through it and tell me where you end up. Well, uh, there's none. So the map maker, map maker can then confidently say that A doesn't go anywhere. Um, and it says, okay, oh, wait, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And says, okay, now if you're in state number one and you see a B, where do you go? Okay, so walks through B, and actually, you can just look at the information here. You can say, if I'm in state number one, and I follow a B, I end up here at two and three. So it's kind of like you're finding the intersection of these two rows and columns. So the map maker writes down two and three over here on the side. Okay, and then if I'm in state number one, and I go through C, I don't go anywhere. Okay, so one of the rules here about drawing this table is anytime you add a new state to the table inside, you also write it down here on the left-hand side. Okay, so we added two and three inside, so we're going to write it on the left-hand side. I'll show you again. So if we're in two and three, and we follow an A, so you look here on rows two and three, and A, you see what's there. So there's a one and a nothing. So we combine the one and nothing together and we get just one. So I'm going to put that down. Okay, now two and three on a B. So you look in the two and the three rows on a B. You look to see what's there and you combine those together. Two and nothing combines to make two. And then two and three on a C. You look at what's in those cells and you combine them. So we've got one and three combined together to make one and three. Now you look at your list of states here and we just added two is new and one and three is new. And you keep going. You look in room uh, state number two on an A. So here's two A combines together to make a 1, 2B, 2 and B is nothing, so we'll just put a dash there, and then 2C is 3, so we'll put a 3 here. Now I added 3 as a new state, so I'll write that down, and I keep going. So now 1 and 3 on an A. One, three on an A, combine to make nothing. So I'll put a dash there. One and three on a B, combines to make two and three. And then one and three on a C, combines to make one and three. So I look at these and I see that I didn't add anything new. I already had two and three and I already had one and three. And then, let's do 3. So 3 on an A is nothing. 3 on a B is here. That's a 2. 
and then 3 on a C is 1 and 3. And I didn't add anything new there either. I got already had 2, already had 1 and 3. So I'm done. I've fully explored the table. Let's go in and label our starting states and accepting states. So our starting state is 1. Our accepting is anything with a 3. So let's see if we can draw our DFA table from that, or DFA diagram. So I've got state number one on an A doesn't go anywhere. On a B goes to two and three. And C doesn't go anywhere. Um, two and three on an A goes to one. On a B goes to two. And on a C goes to 1 and 3. All right, 2 on an A goes to 1. So it goes all the way back, all the way back here. 2 on a B doesn't go anywhere, and then 2 on a C goes to just 3. So that's a new state. OK, 1 and 3 on an A doesn't go anywhere. 1 and 3 on a B goes to 2 and 3. And then 1 and 3 on a C goes to 1 and 3 goes to itself. And then finally, state number 3 on a B goes to 2. And state number 3 on a C goes to 1 and 3. So it goes back over here to the left. And then we label our accepting. So anything with a 3. And that should do it. Okay, so you can take an NFA state machine diagram, turn it into a table, transform that table into a DFA table, and then transform that table into a DFA that you can see. This one also ended up being a little more complicated than the original one. How are we doing? Doing good. All right, I got two more examples. This time, we're not even going to start with the NFA diagram. We're just going to start with a table. And then we're going to turn it into a DFA table. And then a diagram. So across the top, I'm going to put my transitions, and I'm going to put my start, and then I start filling it in. So to do one on an X, I look in this row, in this column, and I combine to see that that's three. One on a Y is one, and one on a Z is nothing. I just added three to my states. I already had a one, so I don't have to add that again. Now let's look at... 3 on an X, that goes to itself. 3 on a Y goes to 1 and 2. And 3 on a Z goes nowhere. 
I just added one and two to my states. I already had a three. So one and two on an X. So you look on these two rows in this column and you combine that and you get three. And then one and two on a Y. Combine those together and you get one and two. And one and two on a Z. So these two rows, this column, combine those together and you get one and three. Looks like I added one and three to my states, so I better add that to the left hand side. And then we repeat. So one and three on an X. So we look at these two rows in this column. Combine these together to make three. And then one and three on a Y. We get one and two. And then one and three on a Z. Combine together to make nothing. All right, and I didn't add anything new to the table, so I'm, I'm done with the table now. Now let's draw the diagram. Oh, whoop, before I do that, uh, anything with a three is a final. So this one and this one. Okay, so we got a state number one. It has an X leading out of it, which goes to three, and it has a Y leading out of it going, oh, going to itself. Three has an X going back to itself. Three has a Y going to one and two. Uh, one and two has an X going to three. It's got a Y going to itself. And it's got a Z going to one and three. And then one and three has an X going to three. It's got a Y going back to one and two, and then that's it. And then this is an accepting, and this is an accepting. Okay, and we'll do one more. Write our transitions across the top and our starting state over on the left hand side. All right, one on an A goes to two, three, and on a B goes to one. We just added two, three, so we write that down on the left hand side. Now, two, three on an A. Combine these together to get one, three. Two, three on a B. Combine these together to get one, two, three. And I just added both of those to our states. One and three on an A gives us two and three. One and three on a B gives us one and three. And I just added two and three as a state. All right, one, two, three on an A. So look at all three rows in this column and those combine together to make one, two, three. And then one, two, three on a B. Those also make one, two, three. You already had a two and three state. Oh, I did. You're right. Thank you. So that means um, I'm done. All right, so anything with a two or a three in it is accepting. Then 
finally we got state number one on an A, goes to two and three on a B. Oops, it goes back to itself. Two and three on an A, goes to one and three. And on a B, goes to one, two, three. One and three on an A goes to two, three. And on a B goes to itself. And then one, two, three on an A goes to itself and a B goes to itself. And then this is an accepting, this one is, and this one is. Professor? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for a dumb question, but how how do you so easily tell which are accepting and which are not? Oh, so you look over in your original table here, and I can see that two and three is are accepting. So anything with a two or a three in it. Is that, is that what you were asking? Is how do you get from these acceptings to these? Uh, no, I mean, I mean, like, in, in originality, how do you tell which are accepting and which are not, like, difference between terms? Um, so if we had a diagram there, like here, I would have double-circled the acceptings. And then I circled them over here, just to, okay. to show them. So over here, I skipped the diagram. So you just have to accept, <laughs> if you excuse the pun, you have to accept that on the first one, three isn't accepting, and two or three isn't accepting on the second one. Okay, thank so, you. So, I mean, if we, if we drew out this diagram, we would get, uh, here's one on an A, goes to two, and A also goes to three, and on a B goes back to itself. And then two on an A goes to one, and three, and on a B goes to itself, and it also goes to three. And then three on an A goes to itself, and on a B it goes back to one, and it goes to itself. And this was an accepting, and this was an accepting. So this is what the original diagram would look like. Ah, oh, that's ugly. That's what it would have looked like. <laughs> but in that original diagram, had I drawn that one first, I just arbitrarily decided that two and three were going to be accepting because that's just the way I drew it. And then this is the corresponding table for it. So if I had started with the DFA, this is what it would what it would have looked like. So this table encapsulates all this ugly information in it. Okay, thanks for mm -hmm. explaining in detail. I appreciate it. I thought that was uh, if you were starting with the NFA. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Okay. Yeah, ugh. I don't know why I said a DFA here. Because I haven't had enough coffee. That's what it is. Okay, so I'll leave you with this. <clears throat> Here's an NFA with an epsilon transition it's right there. What strings do you think this one accepts? A, B. Okay, so it certainly accepts A, B. Then A and an empty string. And except A 
and then an empty string, and we don't have to put that in the string. It accepts just A, because we can go this way, and then zip right over here, and then go to our accepting. And then how about the bottom one? What strings does this accept? Y. Yes, it accepts Y, because we can go through the epsilon and then through the Y. X, Y. X, Y, mm-hmm. X, Y, Y. Good. Right, we can do this, then a Y. And then jump back over here and do another Y. Any others? We can just keep adding Ys. Sure. At the end. Sure. With or without the X. Yeah. So we could just do Y, Y, Y. So we can skip the X and then do any number of Ys. Good. So here's what that first one looks like. In this simulator, I can't draw two state, uh, two transitions that go to the same state, so I have to label one with two symbols. But let's try it out. So I can do A. And then B, and then it ends up here at the accepting. And I can do just A. Now, it's a little confusing there. It showed like both of them jumping at the same time. But what you can actually picture is happening is it goes over to A, and then it goes over to the accepting after it does the A. Right? So really, it's kind of like this one bounces over, and then it takes another hop and goes over to this one. So it can either bounce over here and stay, or it can take this hop and go over to the next one. And let's try the other one. So notice, as soon as I hit start, it immediately jumped over to this other one. So now it's both in this state and it's in this one because it followed this epsilon immediately. So now it's essentially starting in both of these. Now I'm ready to start typing things. So I can do X, Y, and then we end up in a final. I can do just Y, and we end up in a final. I can do X, Y, Y, and then any number of those. And then finally I can just do any number of Ys. So we're kind of running out of time. So I think next time, next time on uh, Wednesday. I'll show you how to turn this kind of NFA, so these are NFAs with epsilon transitions, into DFAs. And this is called a, uh, an NFA because when you get to two, you don't know whether to take the B or to skip ahead and go straight to the three. Again here, uh, because of the epsilons, you don't know whether to take the X or to skip ahead. And when you're in this state here, you don't know whether to say, okay, I'm done, or should I loop back and try again? So the epsilons there make it non-deterministic because you don't know whether to take the epsilon for free or to stay where you are. Stay where you are. <clears throat> and as we've seen in the simulator, what you actually do is you take both, both branches, 
and then um, see where it leads you. We'll do that next time. So you will still show you visually how to do it, and then we'll do a table. And the table is a little bit different. You still have the trans you still have the transitions across the top, but you now you got a new column, the epsilon column, that you have to incorporate into the table. Okay, any uh, any questions before we go? Sorry, I did most of the talking. Seems like I did most of the talking this time. If we had done this in an actual classroom, uh, we would have like paused every once in a while and had you work on a problem. Like when we were doing these over here, I would have said, "Okay, now that I showed you how to do this one over here, then uh, you, you know you do that one." <laughs> but uh, we're online here, so it's a little bit harder to do. Okay, so that's how you transform an NFA into a DFA using a table. And like I said, next time we'll do NFAs with epsilon transitions using a table. And then that will complete our discussion of regular expressions and finite state machines. And you will now have a complete picture of how you can start with a regular expression, go to a um, diagram, and then go to a table, and then transform that table, and then finally end up at a, um, a DFA. And so what I'm also going to show you next time is in addition to, let me see, do I have, there, this is another little preview of what we're doing. This is called Thompson's Constructions. And I'll give you a little caveat here. These constructions are just a little bit different than what you might find out on the internet. I've simplified them a little bit um, in part because this is a lower division discrete structure class, not an upper division one. And so I'm just kind of like giving you an idea of what it looks like. If you actually go on and do Thompson's constructions in like in a, in a programming language theory class, then like kind of forget what I told you here and pay attention to what your teacher actually shows you. But uh, basically, if you have a sequence of symbols, you just line them up. You've, you've seen that before. If you have an alternation, then you do it like this. And then if you have a star, this is where it's different. You can do it like this. I call that the UFO construction because it kind of looks like a flying saucer. And so the star actually ends up being more complicated than just simply a loop. And the reason for that is that if we have just a loop like this, then if I gave you a regular expression like A, B, or C star, and you kind of follow using just a loop, then you end up with something that looks like this. And the problem with this diagram is that you can do a bunch of C's and then go do an AB. But that's not allowed by this regular expression. This regular expression says you either do the AB or you do the C. But not both. And so what you have to do is you have to isolate this C branch. You have to make sure that, that once you go down this C branch, you can't go back and do the ABs. Or once you do the AB branch, you can't go back and do the Cs. So it means we need to take the C away from the start state. And, you know, in the past we had something that looked like this. We had a C, and then a C over here, and then we made this a final and this a final, right? You know, and that works, but... It's like um, you have to do a little, little bit of thinking and analysis to get that to work correctly. Especially if what you had over here on the, left, on the right hand side was a little more complicated than just one single symbol. Like, you know, if we had something like um, A, B, or C, or D star, you know, now it's getting a little more complicated. So, what we're looking for is a set of constructions where we can just kind of blindly substitute. So anywhere where we see sequencing, we just put in a string here. 
Anywhere where we see alternation, we just make two branches. And anywhere where we see a star, we just simply draw this. And so the purpose of having this UFO operator here is it isolates the C, right? Once you decide to go down this branch here, you've committed yourself to doing at least one C. If you want to do no C's at all, you go down this branch and you skip over it entirely, thus never getting you into a situation where you might go back and do a C. Okay? So that's the purpose of this construction, is to isolate this C loop so that we can't go back and then go and do a different branch later on. So it looks complicated, but it's there for a reason. Now, um, like I said, if you go out on the internet and you like look for Thompson's constructions, you might end up seeing something that looks like this. So if you got A, B, it looks like epsilon, and then A, and then B, and then epsilon over here. And then if you do A or B, it looks like this. Uh, what am I trying to do here? A, B. Right, so every single construction has like an epsilon sitting on the other. You kind of picture them as being kind of like train couplers. Like, you know, when two train cars get together, I want to connect together, there's those couplers between them. And so these epsilons act as kind of like couplers. And so when you want to put things together, you just couple up the epsilons. And what it means is you've got this absolute explosion of epsilon transitions in your diagram. Um, those are okay. I mean, mathematically, they'll all just uh, fall away when you do the transformation. All those epsilons will end up going away. But it's just like a lot of extra work. Um, so that's why I don't show it to you that way. I just show it to you this way. And you hook them up yourselves. You'll be fine. Um, I think that's it. That's it for today. So if there's nothing further, oh, somebody here says, I programmed a recursive descent parser, but I don't understand. Should I create an abstract syntax tree and parse? Huh. Well, if you already programmed the parser, I guess, well, the next step then would be to, from your, build that data structure, build that abstract syntax tree, and then start walking it, do a depth-first search, or depth-first traversal through the tree. And then every time you encounter a node in the tree, that's where you have an action associated with that. Like, do you output some, um, do you output some code as a result of that, encountering that, that node? Or do you maybe save some information about your program to output later on? Like, if you're doing a variable declaration, you don't actually output any code, but you'll want to put that variable into a symbol table so that later on, when you encounter that variable again, you know what type it is because you've recorded that information. You know what its value is because you've recorded that information. <clears throat> um, so every time you encounter a node, you either output some code or you might store away some information that you're going to use later on. So that would be the next step. All right. So kind of a quick session today. Next time we'll go over the Thompson's constructions and we will learn how to transform an NFA into a DFA with epsilon transitions. If we don't finish up on Wednesday, then we'll bleed over into Monday and then we'll finish up on that day. And then we'll push the million more machines until later. Right? We got plenty of time left in the semester, so plenty of time to do stuff. All righty. Uh, you don't know why you should do an abstract syntax tree for simple parsing? Is it necessary? Maybe not. If you're doing really simple stuff, maybe you can go straight to um, outputting your target code. It really depends on your application. Are you doing a full programming language or are you doing something simpler? Like if you're just parsing, I don't know, like uh, floating point numbers. Then maybe you can do something simpler.
Maybe, maybe you don't have to do that. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here. It's hard to cut some of you off, but uh, we, Thanks. we reached our time. Thanks, Professor. All right. Well, enjoy your Thanks, day. Professor. It's nice and sunny out. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Okay. And so I'm sorry. I don't have... Um, I don't have a really good answer for you because I don't have all the information about what you're trying to do. But like I said, if your application is simple, then maybe you don't need a whole abstract syntax tree. Once you've got your recursive parser, every time um, your parser like encounters a certain thing in your in your expression that you're trying to evaluate, you can just at that point you just output some code. It's essentially what something like the antler tool does is you never actually build the abstract syntax tree yourself. It gets built internally, and then in your grammar you just write down when I encounter this node, I'm going to do this thing, and when I encounter this node, I'm going to do this thing. So you never build the tree yourself. But you can get access to it, and you can walk it if you want to. So I'm going to end things here. I hope you all have a good day or good night. And I will see you, as I'll see some of you on Tuesday, right? I'm doing my C programming class then. Um, and I'll see the rest of you on Wednesday. Right. Take care. Bye-bye.